Good evening. In the next 15 minutes, you will bear witness to some of the finest, most cutting-edge theatre to grace British shores. Mere words as I speak them to you now cannot possibly prepare you for the glitz, the glamour and the gravitas of the spectacle you are about to witness. You will sit truly comatosed, blinded by the sheer showmanship and dazzling, daring do. Stars will truly be in your eyes, in your face, literally in front of your face, thrusting powerfully in no more than a metaphorical sense and indeed no less. You will bear witness to show-stopping chorus lines, gorgeous costumes, cabaret, pyrotechnics, non-stop laughs, non-stop fun, non-stop, non-stop. Impressionists, ventriloquists, pirates, ninjas, pirate ninjas, jugglers, fire-eaters, clowns, fire-eating clowns, acrobats, go-go dancers, strippers, full frontal nudity, exotic ladyboys, lady girls from Fife, full-on hardcore pornography, relentless shaggery, brutal stabbings, political assassinations, show trials and public hangings, military coups, World War Twos, nuclear holocaust, supernovas, the collapsing of worlds, and the rebirth of civilization, the second coming of Christ, and his live re-crucifixion, all presented to you in stunning high definition. Strap thyselves in mere mortals, mere flesh and blood, mere residue on the swirling bowl of life, for thy meek eyes are not fit to... <clears throat> Hello? What? Dave? Ah. I see. Yes, okay. I do apologise, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, we appear to have run out of money. And so in a change to our advertised programme, we now present the thoroughly thrifty Anne Widdicombe and her vagina monologues. Sterling University Drama Society presents Sounds Like Suds. I switch on my TV for a session of the Wii Fit, I find that I just can't be bothered anymore. I'm tired of the balance games and the yoga moves that make you look like you've got a brick in your pants. So I was pad sweatingly excited when I opened the birthday present from my grandparents and found a fantastic gift straight from Japan. The Wii Badge! This terrifying contraption, which looks like a large pair of hair straighteners, truly is the vibrator of the future. And it plugs straight into your Nintendo Wii. Now when you clap eyes on this indiscreet device for the first time, you think to yourself, I'd rather live in an arse crack or be punched in the lung than have this in me. But it's easy to charge, it's made from white plastic and has a special attachment for other entrances. Wee Vag also comes with industrial strength cleaning solution and a pair of pliers. Should you have any problems, you can also spread the cost over 9 or 12 months, provided that your intestines haven't been ripped from your insides until you've choked on your own excrement. Visit www.deargodwhy.com forward slash don't use that to order your Wee Vag now. This product is brought to you by One Girl Screwed Up Nicotine Induced Dreams. And now, the continuing adventures of Captain Spaceman. That's Spaceman. I'm sorry? My name is Spaceman. It's Jewish, like Goldman or Lieberman, but not like Steinberg. That doesn't have a man in it at all. My apologies. And now, the continuing adventures of Captain Spaceman. Thank you. <clears throat> this week, our courageous hero faces uncharted territory, the Job Center Recruitment Office. What perilous fate awaits him there? We'll find out now on the continuing adventures of Captain Spaceman. Spaceman. Sorry. Just don't do it again. Hello, uh, can I help you? Uh, yes you can, citizen. I have an appointment for 12.50, which is now. I am very punctual. Oh yes, uh, a Mr. Spaceman. That's Spaceman. It's Jewish, like Goldman, but don't worry. I get that all the time. So, Mr. Space. Man, what can I do for you? Captain Spaceman, if you please. It's just polite. Oh, sorry, uh, of course. Um, I'm sorry, but we don't appear to have a first name for you. Could you tell me your name, please? Captain. Your name is Captain. That is correct. Captain Spaceman. 
And you currently work as a... Captain of a ship. That is to say, a ship that flies through space. A spaceship, one might call it. And one would be correct to do so. So you're Captain... Captain Spaceman. That is my full title, yes. The coincidence has been pointed out to me many times before. I like to think it was destiny. That or a clever ploy by my overzealous parents. May God rest their souls. Or may the devil torture them for all eternity. It's really not my place to judge. I'm not a god, but I am close. So you've been to space? Correct. That is where spaceships go, after all. Hence the name. What's it like? Big. Space is very big and full of aliens. Some of them unfriendly. Oh, you've seen combat. A great many times. I led the fleet in the battle against the hordes of Zidon 7. We won by default when Zidonian soldiers en masse went home for lunch. A strange culture and very fat. Wow. And there was the time I took out a Zyklorak Sunar warrior on my own with no weapon. <laughs> but that's amazing. Not really. Zyklorak Sunar are only three feet tall. I was basically beating up a midget. A vicious alien midget, but still a midget. I'm not proud of that. Well, not openly proud. Secretly, I loved how easy it was. <laughs> not a very tall order, eh? <laughs> I don't appreciate that joke. Midgets still have feelings. They are people to remember, except the Zyklorak Sunar. They are not people, but they are midgets. And they have glass jaws. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just excited. I've never been into space. I've never seen all these evil alien races. They are not all evil. Some of them are good, and some of them are sexy. Sorry, did you just say sexy? Yes, I did. Part of our mission is to seek out strange, new, sexy alien races and make beautiful love to them. To as many of them as humanly possible. Seven in one day. It would have been more, but the body was not willing. I still had a lot of fun trying, though. But, but how does that even work? Well, many of these alien women have very similar anatomies to human women, only better. And they are more curious, more willing to please... I could draw you diagrams. I have in the past. I have boggled many minds. That sounds like a sweet deal. It is sweet. Sweet like honey. A very fine, exotic honey. But I'm to understand that you're looking for a new job. That's why you're here. Can I just ask why? Your job sounds amazing. You've only heard part of it. It's not all about fighting midgets and making love to exotic alien women. Though that is a significantly large part of it. And that part is amazing. You haven't lived until you've kicked a midget in the face, then followed up by enjoying intercourse with a blue-skinned goddess with three breasts. So, w what's the problem? Job security. I keep being shot at. One day I may end up dead from being shot. I'd rather not die, especially not through being shot, which seems likely. I get shot at a lot. A lot. Fair enough. What type of work would you like to get into? Retail. Sweet, sweet commerce. I have a way with people. I would charm the men, seduce the women, refrain from attacking the little people. I would sell things. Okay, do you have any relevant experience in retail? Is maneuvering through the asteroid field on the outskirts of the Zamfogian homeworld relevant experience? Is outrunning a zombie and battle cruiser with only half-engine power relevant experience? Is unifying the Zorgan and Zorgil races by simultaneously engaging in the erotic act with both their queens relevant experience? No. No, I suppose it isn't. But it's all the experience I have. Well, then I'm sorry, but I really don't think that you're cut out for retail. Also, do all these alien races' names start with the letter Z? Yes, actually. I'm not sure why. It often gets confusing. Mm, well, I'm sorry to tell you this, but I really think that the job you have is the only one you're actually suited to. I just can't see you in retail. No, I believe you're right. My great courage and stunning bravery are even evident to a simpleton like you. It is my destiny. Captain by name, captain by nature. Spaceman by name, spaceman by nature. That doesn't work. It's been well established that the pronunciation is different. Do not mock my Jewish heritage through bad puns. Sorry. I suppose I must go now. We are headed to the planet Zeb. They say the women there have four foot long tongues. That's longer than a Zyklorak Sooner is tall. It should be... Very interesting. Whenever humankind is in danger, wherever midgets roam free and unkicked, and where alien pornography is waiting to be directed, planet Earth has a friend in Captain Spaceman. Spaceman. Or oh, whatever. Greg, Mrs. Pembroke is here with her daughter, Evie. I was wondering if Evie could come and spend some time with you. Mother, you know I have nothing in common with any girl. Oh, she's a lovely girl. She's about your age, and I think she's into some of the same things you are. 
Maybe you should try setting your sights for her. Oh, come on, Mother. Girls are like an alien species to me, one which even the universal translator can't understand. I know, I know. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Yeah, right. And you know, neither Mars nor Venus supports life. <sighs> you just need to learn to stop being so antisocial. Unsociable, not antisocial. <laughs> you don't give someone an antisocial behaviour order for sitting in his room playing computer games. Watch out or I will. I'll go and get Evie. I'm sure you'll like her if you just keep an open mind. An open mind? I like Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who and Firefly. Can't get much more open-minded than that. Hi, I'm Evie. Your mum told my mum that you're into a lot of the same things I am. I doubt it. I have no interest in makeup and hanging out in malls outside clothes shops giggling at boys. Are you kidding? I have no interest in that airhead stuff. Do I look that superficial? Hey, Nova Quest! I've got that game. Isn't it great? Have you figured out how to get past the troll in the third level yet? It took me weeks to get that. But it's quite simple if you let your mind work that way. <laughs> you can't like Nova Quest. You're a girl. Only geeks like Nova Quest, and girls can't be geeks. Careful, Greg. That sounds like sexism. If you give me any sexism. I might have to break out my Megazord, and you don't want to have to fight that. It'll kick your glutus maximus. Don't mock me. So, why is it that girls can't be in Supernova Quest and all that? Because there are no female geeks. Everyone knows that all geeks are guys who live at home long after they're supposed to move out and who never get any girls. That's why I'm still a virgin at 19, and everyone I knew at school was having constant sex at 13 years old. At least, they said they were. But I do like all that geek stuff. Lord of the Rings? I'm a huge fan of Lord of the Rings. You should see my room. Wow, I'm amazed you actually remembered its name. That you didn't just call it that movie where Wardy looks so hot with his bow and his pointy elf ears. I don't watch it for Orlando Bloom. Oh, of course you do. That's why girls watch Lord of the Rings. It's a story of male fellowship, a group of men who travel together. But I expect you were bored through all those scenes of action and adventure, and you were just waiting for another close-up of Orlando Bloom. Or a tedious scene of Aragorn and Arwen's romance. If you knew anything about geek culture, which, as a girl, you obviously don't, You'd know that before Peter Jackson decided to betray Tolkien's disciples by making a film, there was a book, and it didn't have all those things that Peter Jackson put in to sell out to a female audience. I read the book when I was 11 years old. I've loved it ever since. You read the book? What made you do that? When someone told you it was a fantasy? Were you expecting magic pink unicorns? and big-eyed talking rabbits, and princesses in tall hats and long dresses, gazing into wishing wells, singing about princes. I bet you were disappointed. Greg, I've tried to be nice to you, but you're making it really hard. You refuse to accept the world doesn't always conform to your view of it. That's as bad as stereotyping. It's as bad as saying, saying Odo is evil because he's the same race as the founders. Well, I've run out of patience. Being friends with you just isn't going to help me in any way, although I'm beginning to think it might be of some help to you. Well, if you continue to resist, then I'll give up. I'm not the Borg. I don't think resistance is futile. You're not fooling me with your references. Even if you do like the same things as geeks, as male geeks, you like them for completely the wrong reasons. For you, science fiction and fantasy are just excuses to see men who you drool over, a sight at all the romantic subplots, a cutesy creatures who've only been put there to pander to the likes of you in the first place. You'll never appreciate the inventiveness of the genres, the way they make us expand our minds and see the world in a different way. <laughs> I 
I don't need her. I've got all I need right here. Oh, come on. No way are those Sarah Michelle Gellar's real boobs. Someone photoshopped a head onto someone else's body. What a rip-off. New from Terrifying Toys, it's Boxo Matches. Shake them, strike them, burn them, put them out on someone's face. Ah, not the face, not the face. Kids love them. I'm starting a forest fire. I'm setting fire to sentient creatures. I'm burning myself for self-gratification. Ah, that's the spot. They're strikeable, abusable, inflammable fun. Boxo matches, get them while they're hot. When we grow up, we want to be arsonists. And now there's new Cano petrol, so your kids can really feel the burn. Sounds Like Suds starred James Breen, Rhiannon Marshall, Jesse Wright, Keith Potter, Alison Perry, Sean Esrol, Robert Davis, Sarah Dendy, Michael Cowling, Kate Krause, Alex Campbell, George Easton, John Bruce, Sarah Grant, and Caron Dixon. It was written by the members of the Stirling University Drama Society, and the producer was Robert Davis.